Now let's take a look at the um, transfer function, uh, what we're going to call computer generated transfer functions using this e same example, but we are going to use the bone graph method to do this. We saw um, previously how we did it with the block diagram method, so we're going to see in here what we call computer generated transfer functions. In here, the objectives are going to be the same. The, um, the objectives are that the um, a voltage C is the output, and of course, I1, the current I1, is also the output. So, what we need to do is um, we need to need to say that uh, in voltage C is 1 over C times Q2, and if we apply the Laplace transform to that, voltage is 1 over C Q sub 2. This, in this case, I1 is dq1 dt. So that's that's the how we start the problem. So how do we actually build a bond graph model of this? The first thing we're going to do is to put a one junction for each one of the distinct currents here. This is going to be I sub 2. And now we are going to attach the elements that see those currents. Obviously, this one on the right hand side has a C element. This one over here has an I element um, with value L sub 2, this with value C. And then you have, on this side, we have the source of effort, of course, in which in this case is the voltage. Yeah, and then up here we have um, in L1, this is going to be an I element with value L1. And then as we build this bond graph, we, we're going to say, OK, this is the, um, the difference in two currents is what this R element sees. See? And we could write it to up or, yeah, well, let's just do it this way. This is all we need to, uh, to go to the CAMG program and actually enter this model and see what what we can do for with it. So we're going to go to the all programs and find out where CAMG is over here. And then I'm going to run it. And what we are going to do is to, is to try to put in here, in CAMG, the um, this bone graph model that I have on the left hand side. So I'm going to use the window option here to be able to build it real quick. And so this would be SE. And then I have a, um, one junction on this side, which is right here. And then we, we create this. We, we go and create the I element on this over here. And we go from here to here. And then we put the 0 like this. And then we put the R element right there. And then we put another one junction for the right hand side, which would be over here. And then here we have two other elements. One is an I element, which is, let's say, OK, this is over here. And then this would be from here to here. Then we have a C element, which is from here to here. OK. So this is. If we want to look at it in a little in full screen, we can to make it look um, bigger. But uh, what I can do is I'm just going to take a picture of this so that I can actually um, do. I'm going to take a picture of that see here so we can put it in our notes. I'll just take it from the bone graph model over here. And I will come here and I will just paste it. Yeah, this is the 
bone graft model as we enter it into the KMG software. Maybe I think it's actually good to put it over right here. It has to it a little bigger. It has all the. So, having done that, I think we need to identify what our outputs are in terms of the bone graft variables. So, what I suggest is what is B sub C in, in this notation? B C is on over on this on this on this side so that is um, uh, e sub 7 right so that would be e sub 7 e sub 7 is my output and what is i sub 1 what's i1 would be just the current uh, on on bond i2 so this would be f sub 2 so what we're going having established my outputs this we're going to put it in these notations. These are the outputs. Okay, like that. And so I am going to come here and and go see if you if you want to see it a little bigger like that. This is what we have. So uh, we could just make our bond graph model pretty just by moving this one to make it nice and square and then we go interface and we need to go to MATLAB in this case so we go to MATLAB there you go and the computer is going to the two programs will negotiate an interface with each other and so CAMG and MATLAB are working together right now to give us a set um, set of uh, M files that in this particular case will help me find these two transfer functions. So hopefully it comes soon. They are working, working, and there it comes. So we have the we have the MATLAB window, but we still haven't gotten the there you go, there's the files. In this case we need to work with this file, the SYM file. And the first thing we need to do is to go and define those two outputs that we have in, in our notes. Remember what they are? Those are E7 and F2. sub So I think what we need to do is come over here and say tell me why, where E7 sub is. And so KMG has produced the, uh, the equations for all the apples, all the efforts, and all the flows. And then we have in here, we're going to call, this is my first output number one. And then, of course, computer is, doesn't know uh, how many apples we want. So we put this in the first row. And F sub 2. So F sub 2 is the second output. There it is. And I'm going to say this is my output number 2. We need to activate this because we are defining the outputs right here. And this is going to be output number 2. So it will go on the second row. That's why we need to put it this 2 over here. And then let's just close this and we will run this file save and run, let's see where my MATLAB window is, now let's just go here it will appear save and run ok, so here's the here's the MATLAB window and we should have seen something already there we go it says that um, we are seeing that these are the um, the input vectors of course the C1 we have these three state variables right there output 2 is F2 up to 1 is E sub 7 you have the e mat the A matrix right there the B matrix the C matrix and then of course the characteristic polynomial and what we'll see next is 
to obtain the transfer functions of, of those two transfer functions that we want. Uh, I think it would be interesting, uh, interesting to compare. You see, there we go. Okay, we're going to say yes. We're going to say here. Still calculating. It did the transfer function for the. Um, it did the matrices, but I don't see the transfer function. Oh yeah, it's coming up. It says transfer function matrix H. So it's taking its time. There we go. So now what the computer has done is produce those two transfer functions. You see, one for um, E sub seven here on the other one for f sub 2 right here if we go and compare these transfer functions perhaps it might not be a bad idea if we steal this and we say okay this is new these are the transfer functions we will have to do a comparison to what we have in the um, with the other approach but I, let me just put them in here so that we have them. Those are the transfer functions. This would be the first transfer function that you have on this. Is this is the E7 transfer function, where this 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 one right here is E sub seven of S over S E one, which is the input equals two. And the second one is really the F sub 2 of S, which is the current, and then over S E 1 of S. This is what you have. So what we could do is, is to try to, we could go to the prior derivation that we did by hand, and then after we did all this, you remember? We wrote the equations here. There it is. After that, we we derive and we organize them by the variables q1 and q2. Then we apply Kramer's rule and we came up with the first transfer function, um, which was for the voltage over here. And then you had the second transfer function, which is the one this is b sub c and then the current over here so i you know we could venture to perhaps paste this in here and try to interpret the variables to see if the von graf one is similar or whether we made a mistake or what oh this is going to is it's not letting us move it around that easy so I am not going to force this. Well, <laughs> you see this is this is 1 over C times SR on, on this one. But the way it is in here is just has only the R and this has come down to the you know 1 these are in the powers of S cube and S to the 4 and then R, S square. And then we have this denominator here. This transfer function is the same as this one. And the second transfer function that we have, this one, has to be this, see? Eh? So it's, you notice the numerator LS square plus SR plus 1 over C. That's what you have in here, see? L, L S 